Hey boys and girls, do you like to read stories? Because I do, I always have. And some of my favorite memories are of my mom or my dad, maybe an older sibling reading stories to me, frequently at bedtime, which I bet is when um, you have stories read to you, or at least you're used to when you were maybe smaller. So um, sometimes I line up my bears and I can read to my bears. And actually, if you see this little thing down here, it looks like he's kind of reading to a dog, his puppy. And here's a mom reading to her little girl. So reading can be a pretty important point, pretty important time in people's lives. So um, I love story time. And let me read you just a little poem about that. I put my bear down for a minute. This is called My Reading Time. I love to hear fun stories by authors A to Z. Sometimes I read them to myself, sometimes they're read to me. I've read some scary stories and grand adventures too. Some have talking animals, do those sound good to you? My favorite time to read is just before I go to bed. I snuggle in my jammies with stories in my head. But you can find me with a book most any time of day. I value all my reading time much more than I can say. And I hope you do too. And so I thought tonight I would read a story to my bears and to you. And if Gracie's listening, maybe even to Gracie, because that's a good thing for you to do. If you don't read to your bears or any of your other stuffed animals, if you have a, a pet in your house, you can read to your pet. It's kind of interesting to see how they react to that. So this is called The Beautifully Ordinary Princess. Once upon a time, because after all, most good stories begin with once upon a time, there lived an ordinary princess. She wasn't especially special in any way. She was good at singing, but not great. She was okay at dancing, but not super. She wasn't bad at coloring, but no better than anyone else. In short, the ordinary princess was just that, ordinary, but she was very happy. And there's her castle. Clara, as that was a princess's name, never really thought of herself as less than anyone else. Until that is, one day when a girl in her class said, Princess Clara, I can sing so much better than you. You'd better move to the back row of the choir. Clara didn't know why her singing wasn't as good, but the girl must be right. So Princess Clara sadly gathered up her music and moved to the back row. Then a boy Clara knew looked at a picture she was coloring and said, Princess Clara, my picture is so much better than yours. My trees are better. My houses are better. You should stop coloring and do something else. Clara looked at her picture and then at his and then back at hers. She couldn't really see what made hers less good, but the boy must be right. So she sadly put her colors away and went to find her dancing shoes. While Clara was spinning and dancing, she noticed a girl watching her and shaking her head. She said, Princess Clara, you don't dance as well as I do, so you should just sit down and watch me dance. Once again, Clara didn't understand how her dancing wasn't as good as the other girls, but she sat down and took off her dancing shoes. Now the princess was a very sad little girl. She never thought of herself as being better than everyone else at these things. In fact, Princess Clara knew she was just okay at singing, coloring, and dancing, but it had never mattered before, at least not until her friends told her. Sadly, Princess Clara went back to the castle, taking her colors and her dancing shoes and her music with her. As she thought about her day, Princess Clara said to herself, I need a fairy godmother like other princesses have, who can wave her magic wand and make me better at everything. In fact, the best, the best at coloring with better houses and trees, the best at singing and the best at dancing. Almost as soon as the words came out of her mouth, a funny looking creature appeared in front of Clara and said, hello, Clara, I am your fairy godmother. Clara was thrilled, of course, even though this didn't look like the fairy godmother she imagined. It figured she'd get an ordinary fairy godmother, she thought. So you want to be the best at coloring, singing, and dancing, eh? Said the very ordinary godmother. Yes, said the sad princess. Can you help me? Oh, yes, said the ordinary fairy godmother, for that is what I do. 
And with that, she waved her magic wand, said some fairy godmother words, and said, so there. Clara already felt more confident and just knew she would now be better at most everything thanks to her fairy godmother's magic. She was so excited to try her new abilities that she almost forgot to thank her ordinary fairy godmother. She first took out her crayons and paper and colored a picture of her castle with trees and flowers around it. Immediately, she knew her trees were wonderful. Her castle was great and her flowers were beautiful. Her fairy godmother said, very nice. Next, the princess laid out her music and began to sing. Her notes were beautiful and clear and she knew it was wonderful singing. Very nice, said the fairy godmother. Finally, Clara slipped on her dancing shoes and twirled, spun, and leapt in the air. She knew she was good, maybe even the best. The fairy godmother once again said, very nice. Clara said, fairy godmother, I really appreciate your using your magic, but I don't understand why you just keep saying very nice. I thought she would say, you're the best, or that's the greatest. After all, your magic made me color the most beautiful pictures, sing the most beautiful songs, and dance the most beautiful dances. But you just keep saying very nice. The ordinary fairy godmother smiled and said, Princess Clara, you always believed that your pictures were good. You were always proud of your singing, and you always enjoyed your dancing and felt good about it. It was only after others said you weren't good at these things that you doubted yourself. You began to see yourself through the eyes of others, and those are not the important eyes. Clara didn't understand why her ordinary fairy godmother, what her ordinary fairy godmother was saying. Wasn't her coloring, singing, and dancing so much better once her godmother used her magic? She asked her very ordinary fairy godmother that very question. No, child, I didn't need to use magic for that. You are fine just as you are. I just needed to help you see yourself through your own eyes. Those are the important eyes. In fact, those are the only eyes that matter. At last, Princess Clara understood. It didn't matter what others said about her pictures or her singing or her dancing. It was only important what she herself thought, and she was happy with all of her abilities. The princess hugged her fairy godmother, who she now thought was not just ordinary, but beautifully ordinary, and thanked her. She promised that she would see herself only through her own eyes from then on. And Princess Clara, who was still wearing her dancing shoes, did a beautifully ordinary and perfectly joyous dance all the way through the castle. And she lived happily and ordinarily ever after. So that's the beautifully ordinary princess. So I hope you enjoyed that story. I enjoyed getting snuggly in my jammies and um, kind of snuggling with my bear and reading that to you. And there are just before we leave some books that I think are really good. This is Peter Rabbit, which is a classic, of course. And Brown Bear, Brown Bear, which Cooper always loved. I lo Guess how much I love you, this one here. And Ten Little Ladybugs, which is all um, worn out because we read it so many times. Polar Express, this is a very good season for Polar Express. So whether you read to your stuffed animals or read to your puppy or your kitty or read to mom or dad or some other uh, big person in your house, I hope you read. And I hope you enjoy being read too. And I love you guys and I will see you soon. So one, four, three. Bye-bye.